Nourishing Nature A-S-M-R and Oils Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel ASMR Nourishing Nature and I say welcome back because it feels like I've been away for a very long time. There are many reasons why I haven't been able to record videos. Perhaps that's another video in itself for another day. But for now though, I've switched out my backdrop and brought some more colours and a pattern. And I'm feeling very spring-like. Everything is beginning to bloom and blossom here where I am in Copenhagen. So we're in for a treat today because I've also brought some ingredients with me. And I have lots more of where that came from because today I'm going to be making some homemade foot bath salts and homemade foot bath scrub as well. So it's spring here as I mentioned and it's a perfect time to start taking care of my feet. Um, I love having bare feet all year round but especially in spring I have my feet in sandals a lot more so it's a really nice time to begin to take care of my feet more thoroughly than I might perhaps do during the winter. I have other focuses during the winter, you could say. So we're going to be making this foot bath salt and scrub. And it's great to pamper yourself and to give yourself a little self-care, a little self-love. But it also makes a great present. So hopefully you can follow along at home. Maybe make these after you've watched the video, perhaps if you're watching this before bed, before sleeping. Maybe it's just interesting to watch. Maybe it will inspire you to make your own. But they certainly make great gifts. And personally, I love giving handmade gifts. And I love receiving handmade gifts. So I'll be making these for myself. But I also like to give them away. Perhaps when I go and visit people. Now we're able to move around a little, little more. And visit people a little more as well. Now spring is coming. So... I'm really excited to make this video today and the sun has been shining but I just heard the wind getting up so I don't know if you can hear the wind in the background but I'm filming this in the middle of the day because it was such a beautiful sunny day and it really felt like it was the time to get back behind the camera as they say. So welcome back, I'm glad to be back and I hope you enjoy this video and enjoy pampering yourself and showing yourself some self-love and some self-care. We have one, two, three, four, five bowls of dry ingredients. Technically, you don't need all these, but I've decided I'm going to use these today in my scrub and bath salts. Probably see that this one is dried lavender. I 
hope the mic is picking up that sound. I do have lavender in my garden and I've been hoping to try some but I just love it in the garden as well and I never catch it early enough to try it. And it smells lovely of course. We will be adding some lavender essential oil as well as some other essential oils later for extra aroma and extra benefit. And you may have seen my video on lavender, I call it the queen of oils. I'll try to remember to link it. I don't think I've done that before in a video, that will be a first. This is the first time for everything. So lavender is one of the ingredients we'll be using. And over here, you can see I spilled some lavender. all going to be mixed together later anyway but I might not use all of it so I'll just separate that out I might not use all of this today that one over there so this one that's a great sound isn't it Looks like ice crystals or fake snow. This one is actually Epsom salts. Epsom salts have been used in bath salts for centuries. And we know that they're a great way of getting magnesium and sulfates into the body. So today I'm using these to make foot bath salts, but if you have a bath, I'm lucky enough to have a full bath, full size bath. I know not everyone has access to that, but hopefully everyone has access to a bowl that they could soak their feet in. When I say everyone, I know a lot of people don't even have access to running water. But I'm imagining the people watching this video will at least have access to a bowl to soak their feet in. But if you do have access to a full-size bath, it can be great to add Epsom salts to your bath so that you can absorb the magnesium and sulfates and support your body in relaxing and in healing itself support the body's natural healing and natural relaxation of muscles especially if you've been overexerting yourself so that's the Epsom salts this beautiful pinkish colour is from Himalayan salt, unrefined Himalayan salt. I'm going to squeeze these. Can you see? Oops, <laughs> sprayed everywhere. unrefined Himalayan salt in a similar way that unrefined sea salt hasn't been processed and therefore it retains lots of trace minerals including magnesium as well calcium and potassium perhaps also trace minerals like zinc and iron and lesser known trace minerals as well so 
So again, it can be great to soak your feet or your whole body in sea salt, Himalayan salt, or the Epsom salt that I have here. I'm going to combine these two because I like the texture of the fine Himalayan salt and the fact it's pink combined with the slightly larger salt crystals of the Epsom salt and of course the colour is white so I think they will go quite well together over here I have some sodium bicarbonate or bicarbonate of soda it's also called natron or baking soda and this is because where I live we have really hard water so I'm just going to add a little of this to help soften the water <laughs> just breaking up this, this large and lumpy It'll look nice and smooth, that circular bit in the middle where I'm just scraping it away. I don't want any lumps in what I'm making, I want it to mix well and it's also kind of fun <laughs> to break up these lumps You can make patterns, stripes Play knots and crosses. <laughs> Got a bit flat on the lumps out as well. And finally, over here, I have some organic sugar. So there's different granule size for sugar as well. Not in focus, here we go. I'm struggling to keep the focus here. like that sound as the spoon goes in. So I should just do this for the whole video. <laughs> mm. Very relaxing for me. I hope it all. 
feel so is for you. Okay, so let's take a look at the oils we're going to be using today. And the first one is peppermint oil. Peppermint oil is very minty, as you could imagine. Ah, oh, and it's so uplifting and refreshing. As I'm just smelling it now, it's just enlivening all my senses. It helps you to feel like you're breathing more easily, like you're thinking more clearly. So peppermint helps you to feel more awake and more refreshed. It can help you focus and help you feel like you're focus is sharper and like your memory is working more effectively. It's extremely refreshing. It's also cooling. So I'm going to use it in my foot scrub because it's cooling and relaxing for aching feet. If you have aching feet, if you've been on your feet all day, it's beautiful and cooling in the summer as well, peppermint. At any time of year it's cooling, but it's lovely in the summer to cool down. So it's a favourite oil of mine, so I'm going to be using peppermint, a very useful oil. And then for the foot bath salts, because I want to be able to relax, and I want it also to be good for my skin, but also for my mind as well as my body. So I'm going to be using clary sage which is from the flower of the clary sage plant. So it's quite floral, but it's not as floral as some of the other floral oils, shall we say. <laughs> and it's very calming and I feel it's very grounding too. It's great for releasing oxytocin in women and it also can help support balancing of hormones in men and women actually. So I really like that oxytocin effect I feel that I get when I use it. I feel I get a release of oxytocin, which of course is the love hormone, the hormone that helps us create bonds between our loved ones. And I'm going to combine that with another floral oil, one you've definitely heard of, I'm sure, lavender. Well, we've already had the lavender flowers which smell lovely, but we're just going to add a little bit of lavender oil for an extra boost of the lavender scent. Mm, lavender is also so calming. You've probably heard of lavender being one of the most calming oils. There's been studies and research done on the effects on our brain. For some people, of course, it has the complete opposite effect and it can kind of be irritating almost to them. But for the majority of us, lavender is a calming scent, which is why you find it in so many gardens. And I'm going to combine that with eucalyptus, which is a tree oil. It's from the leaves of the eucalyptus tree, native to Australia. And wow, it's so refreshing. It's so, I love eucalyptus. It's one of the first essential oils I ever smelled. And it really helps me feel like I can breathe more freely and more easily. And it just opens everything up. But it's also very grounding because it's a tree oil. So those three together, the eucalyptus will give me the base note. And the clary sage and the lavender will give me the top floral notes. So I'm going to mix those for my foot bath salts, which I could also use in the bath. So how are we going to do it? 
I think I will start with, which should I start with? The foot scrub or the foot bath salts? So, I think I'll start with the foot scrub. For this I've got some organic coconut oil and I've just made sure that it's liquid. This is usually solid where I live. If you're living in a warmer part of the world, it may be liquid all year round, but mine only goes liquid for a few weeks in the summer. So I've warmed it. It's usually white and solid coconut oil. And I've got the organic um, extra virgin coconut oil. See it says there in Danish, Ekologisk extra jolfer. So, coconut oil of life, in English of course. I use it for cooking, I use it on my hair, on my face, everywhere. Um, and it's normally white and solid, but I've just warmed it. You can warm it in some, you know, you can place it in, in place the jar in some hot water. Or however you want to warm it in a microwave, whatever you works for you, to just make it liquid. Hopefully you can hear that's liquid. Oops. Sounds like a little drum as I use my fingertips on that. combining that with the peppermint and the sugar. So I think I use um, 10 drops of peppermint and sugar in my jar. I've saved a jar, I think this was from some pickles or something, so I'm upcycling my jars as well. Um, I've rinsed it and well I've cleaned it thoroughly to be honest, I haven't just rinsed it, I've cleaned it very thoroughly. So this is a lovely little jar for my foot scrub. I could make a larger size jar, but for today I'm just going to do this one. So I'm going to move my tray a little bit out of the way. And there we go. So I can show you here what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. <laughs> Very simple. I hope it's going to work like this. I'm just opening my coconut oil that's liquid and I'm going to aim for 50% coconut oil, 50% sugar. So I'm going to, oops, I really should move that out of the way. I'm going to pour it in now, coconut oil. I can always add more. And you can't see that too well, the way I've set this up, but hopefully you get the picture. I've filled it up about halfway. And I want to add my peppermint oil to the liquid now, because I want the oil, the essential oil, to mix in the coconut oil, because um, some people, for example, just add their essential oil directly to their Epsom salts, for example. But then the Epsom salts dissolve in the water and they leave the essential oil on the top of the water. And usually that's okay, but in rare circumstances it can get trapped against the skin. So the, first of all, we have the essential oil and then the water forms an aqueous layer on top. And that means the water kind of traps in the essential oil to your skin. And 
can mean that it's too intense, it's not diluted on your skin, even though it's in water, because oil and water don't mix. So I personally never put essential oil directly into my salts and then in my bath. I always like to add some form of coconut oil, even if it's just a little bit, or olive oil, whatever you have in the kitchen. And I always add my essential oil, my peppermint oil here, remember? I always put my peppermint or whatever oil I'm putting and I'm mixing it into the coconut oil so that it dissolves, the essential oil is diluted and dissolved in the coconut oil, if that makes sense. So I always look as well for my two holes. There's a central hole, a larger hole. I don't know if you can see on the camera, <laughs> probably not, but there's two tiny holes in the deep rim. And so if I line them up vertically, then I can count how many drops, because the air will go in the top as the drop comes out the bottom, the larger hole, I mean. So let's try. See if I can get 10 drops. One. oil. You can just swirl it around a little bit while it's still liquid in here. Mmm, smells beautiful. And I can smell a little bit of coconut oil in here, but you can also use coconut oil without flavour if you don't want the coconut oil smell. You know, some coconut oils are made without the coconut flavour for cooking. So now I'm going to take my sugar and I'm simply going to fill up the jar. So hopefully I can do this without spilling too much. <laughs> what did I say? I'll just switch to a smaller spoon. Spoon? Spoon? <laughs> spoon. I'll switch to a smaller spoon and I can clean up the rest later. With the smaller spoon, it's hard. Did you hear the bubbles as it went down? With a jar this size, I should have brought my funnel, I can see, but I didn't. Can you see the, can you see the sugar in there just melting, dissolving a little bit? It won't dissolve completely. We don't want it to, we want it to be quite rough. That's why I like the granulated sugar or the larger sugar. And it takes quite a lot of sugar in here, as you can see. <laughs> I'll spill some more. Don't tell my kids I'm spilling sugar everywhere. <laughs> I really need a funnel. So you see it's getting to the top now. Can you just see the sugar dissolving down inside, mixing? Yeah, so I think I might have to do another video actually where I use my foot bath scrub and salts on somebody. Maybe I can give someone a treat. That would be fun, perhaps. Okay, let's see if that's enough sugar now. It looks like it's enough. Oops, it looks like it's enough, right? And you can see there's still quite a lot of liquid in there. But where I live, as I say, that will set. So it will become more like a solid scrub. And I might just put one more teaspoon in because I can see it's soaking in. Can you see it? Soaking down and in. I do love doing, oops, <laughs> I love making a mess, no, <laughs> I do love doing videos like this, it's so fun, 
And yes, if you make a mess, it means you've had even more fun, right? So I'm going to leave it at that. You can see it's quite full now. And it's all mixing nicely. And of course, the peppermint oil will have mixed already with the coconut oil. So that will be mixed through as well. You see? I love that consistency. Isn't that great? Again, lots of fun. So I just spilled a bit there and there's a bit on the spoon so I can show you. How this scrub looks. So you see? You could use it on your hands or your body as well. No reason it's just a foot scrub. It's just that I wanted to make a foot scrub today. I'm in the mood for pampering my feet. And as I do that, it will be exfoliating the skin underneath. Oops, I don't want it to go back in the jar. I'm going to wash this away. And because it's all organic, natural ingredients, I can just wash it down the drain and the sugar will dissolve. So I can even, I'm going to move this out of the way. I hope that's not too loud. I can even rub it together like that. I have to clean the table anyway. <laughs> and you can see now I'm getting sugar and exfoliating my hands and the coconut oil will be moisturizing as I'm exfoliating. I need to do it on my hands actually. I noticed before my hands are quite dry on the back <laughs> and the coconut oil just smells, sorry not the coconut oil, the peppermint oil just smells amazing. So I just rub this around like this, especially on the dry skin. I've been gardening a lot so my my nails and my skin is very dry. My cuticles need a treatment. And again, that's another video. I have all these video ideas. I just need to make more of them. <laughs> Put the ideas into action. So you can focus on any dry areas of skin. And all the while, the sugar will be exfoliating. So now <laughs> I need to go and rinse my hands before I can make the foot bath salts. So, so I'm back and I've cleaned up my table a little bit. I'm sure there's going to be more mess when I start the salts anyway. But I've rinsed my hands. I don't know if you can see, but before I noticed they were quite dry on the back. And now already the coconut oil has begun to moisturize them and they feel a lot softer feel really lovely and soft. I noticed as I was showing you some of the essential oils earlier how dry they were looking and the gardening. But now I'm beginning to look a little bit softer so if I keep going with it I might have nice hands again soon. <laughs> and of course here is my foot bath scrub or foot scrub I should say or hand scrub or body scrub whatever you want to call it and my hands by the way smell lovely too they smell fresh of peppermint so if you want fresh smelling feet you can use that so so I always like to label my jars so I label and date them so the nib of this pen doesn't look very good, but I'll try. Peppermint. Put scrub. And it is I'll just put 0421 and it should last as long as the ingredients that I put in it. So as long as I keep it out of direct sunlight and out of heat, out of a direct heat source, it should last as long as my coconut oil and my essential oils, the longer the dates on them were. 
as long as the date's on those, where I mean. <laughs> so peppermint foot scrub. Unfortunately, the nib on the pen isn't great, so it's not a great, and there isn't much room to write either. <laughs> but at least I'll know. And if I'm going to give it away to somebody as a gift, then I might take some string, for example. And I'm not sure how long it will be, but I was thinking to wrap it round a few times around the top. Maybe three times perhaps. And to tie a bow. You could do with that if you have some leftover ribbon or something. You could do that, it just adds a little bit of colour to the jar. Perhaps you're better than me at tying bows and things as well. I'm sure there's lots of ideas. Which way is the bow going? I'm trying to make the bow smaller so they hang down. That's it. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> so there we go. Peppermint Foot Scrub, April 2021. Ready to be given as a gift or used on myself. <laughs> as a gift for myself. So I'll put that, I'll, well, I'll leave it in camera and leave it in shot there. And now I'll move on to the foot bath salts. So you can use these together, of course. First one, then the other. So first the foot scrub, and then the bath, and then the bath salts. Or first you could soak your feet in a bath, and then scrub, and then put them back in the bath, and then moisturize, perhaps. I have another. Um, I have another jar here. Oops. With a different lid. I think this one came with some candy or some sweeties of some kind and again I'm upcycling it. I've washed it well. So I think it's going to be quite hard to mix in my jar so I'm going to use this one for measuring and a bowl for mixing. So this time I want to use my Epsom salt. And I'm going to use about 50% Epsom salt and about 50% the pink Himalayan salt. It's just out of shot here. Oops, this one. But I need to leave room for about, I'm going to use about a dessert spoon of this, I think. Just to soften the water with the bicarbonate of soda. And if you want to use lavender flowers for decoration and for a little bit extra colour, then you need to leave room for those as well. So I'll start with my salt because that's the most important thing. How much salt would I like in? Okay, so I'm not doing this very well. Let's find a better way. so far. It's going to take quite a few spoonfuls in this larger jar. Okay, let's see. I think I'll do one or two more. These are like the larger crystals, so like if you've ever heard of the analogy for organising your life, <laughs> when you're planning out your life you put the big boulders in first because the smaller boulders can fill in the holes. So whatever is the most important thing to you, you make sure you do that first. That's like the larger boulders. 
and then so if it yeah things that are really important in life basically things that you really want to do or really feel you have to do um it could be anything from walking your dog taking care of your kids something important that's particularly important to do at work for example that's a larger boulder and then the smaller boulders they can go in afterwards because they can take up the space in the jar that's left by the larger boulders i don't know if this is making sense <laughs> but it's something i think about when planning my own my own life i block out the time in my calendar that i want to spend with my kids when i'm not working with clients and i want to focus on my children i block that time out in the calendar or for example um, when i'm going swimming or something that i know takes a certain amount of time and then the smaller things which could be let me think well cleaning my home or gardening or yeah smaller things they then can go in and take the place around the larger boulders so that I don't prioritize the wrong things as it were <laughs> so I'm now putting in the salt you can see this so the smaller granules of salt are going to take the space around the larger granules of salt that's what I was talking about <laughs> I'm going off on a bit of a tangent but hopefully you can follow me that placing the larger non-negotiables in your calendar <laughs> means that then you can see how much time you have left for the more negotiable things that maybe aren't as important to you and the analogy comes from the large boulders in the jar. You place the large boulders in and then the smaller pebbles and the sand can filter around and take up the rest of the space. The smaller, less important things. But look at the colour difference here. Isn't that lovely? So, as you can see, the, the finer salt is already beginning to filter down. That's what reminded me of the analogy in the first place. But the finer salt is already beginning to filter down. I want to leave some room for my lavender though, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. You can see it's mixing there. In theory you could do this in stripes perhaps as well if you're not going to want to mix it. You could do a layer of Epsom salt and a layer of Himalayan salt and then another layer of Epsom salt and another layer of Himalayan salt. But I'm also going to remember to add my bicarbonate of soda to soften my hard water where I live. So I'll put, I think, I'm going to put two dessert spoons of that in just to make sure. I read somewhere it's a tablespoon of bicarbonate of soda for a kilo of salt. Well, I certainly don't have a kilo here. And I don't have a tablespoon either. I have a dessert spoon, so... <laughs> <laughs> we'll just guesstimate. You see the lovely stripes here. It's almost a shame to mix it up. I'm just going to add a few lavender flowers on the top. To, oops, there we go, I'm spilling again. To bring some more colour and some more texture. So we have four textures and three colours in here. Because we have yeah, the three colours, the white and the white, and then the Four textures, the very fine bicarbonate of soda, which we'll mix in. The Himalayan salt, which is a little more rough. The very rough Epsom salt crystals. And then the lavender flowers at the top here. So, as predicted, I can't really mix these in here, although I could leave them in stripes. But I haven't done it very, very aesthetically pleasingly. <laughs> so I will mix it in the bowl. Again, you can't really see me pouring that because of the camera angle I've chosen today. It's not optimal for pouring that. So I'm going to mix this. Let me lift this up so you can see better. 
going to mix all these beautiful ingredients together now. The longer stem of the lavender there, I'll just take that out. You can see everything's beginning to mix. You can already smell the lovely lavender and we haven't even added our oils yet. to put it down so that I can really give it a good mix. That's better. Doesn't work when you're holding it in the air. See it's kind of a pale pink. How's the white and the pink mix? And the lavender flowers just give it a fleck of lavender colour. And I researched placing flowers in the water and then down the drain. And of course if you have a lot of bath bombs or oils with flowers and and uh, like olive oil and coconut oil going down your drain regularly, you can block your pipes apparently. But with just a little bit of flowers, it should be okay, I believe, to go into the water system because they are organic. Of course, there's no plastic or anything like that in here. The salts are naturally occurring salts. Okay, so but that's why I haven't put more lavender flowers in. I just want a little bit, just to give a little bit. I think that's well mixed now. And I think that's a good, oops. <laughs> I think that's a good ratio of salts to flowers. And of course I want my bicarbonate of soda mixed in very thoroughly as well to soften my water and also help to soften my feet. So. For the essential oils, remember I'm going to be using my clary sage and my eucalyptus and my lavender. So again I'm going to do about 10 to 15 drops in here and as they are all similar strength smells, to my, in my opinion there's not one that's particularly a lot stronger than the others, I'm going to add 5 drops of each. But I always recommend when you're combining oils to put them into to put them into a little um, bowl first so that if you don't like the smell you can add more or well you can't take away but you can <laughs> add some more. So I'm going to start with the clary sage and I'll start with three drops because I can add a couple more in a moment if I would like. So can you see? Two, three. Mm, beautiful smell. And my lavender. I'm going to line up those tops again as well so they're vertical so I can see that I get hopefully three drops of lavender too. Smelling good already. So if I add the eucalyptus, three drops again. One, two, three. So that was four drops of eucalyptus. An extra one sneaked out. 
but that's okay I really love that smell so now I've got them combined in here I can test if I like them and I'm going to add my extra two drops because I thought that that would probably be the case that I really like three of it uh, sorry five of each so all three of my oils in the balanced ratio of five drops of each I'm going to add two more of the lavender as well So I'll have 15 drops in total. One, two. So of course I'm not applying this directly to my skin. Mm, I love the lid sounds as well. I'm not applying this directly to my skin, so it's not so important how many drops, but 15 drops of oil, essential oil, should be perfect for this amount, I think. And it smells really good. So now I'm just going to take a clean spoon and I'm going to use some, some fractionated coconut oil this time. So. The fractionated coconut oil is liquid at room temperature. So, I don't know if you can hear this. But this is always liquid. And this is because it has had the fat content removed. So it doesn't stain your clothes. So this is particularly handy, this one if you want to apply oils to your skin or oils before bedtime and you don't want them to get on your clothing or on your bedding, you can use the fractionated coconut oil by doTERRA. It's a really good one. So you know I love the doTERRA oils. Those are the only essential oils that I use because I know I can trust the quality and the fact that they are completely pure is very important to me, especially with having young children around, but also for myself and my own skin and my own body. So I'm really happy to always use the doTERRA oils and I'm happy to work with the doTERRA oils as well. And I help other people find the best oils for them and I help and support them in using the oils. So if you want to know more about the doTERRA brand or how you can get the same oils as me, please do reach out and get in touch because I'm more than happy to help because I know and trust these oils and I know that they are so, so beautiful gifts of the earth that we can use in so many ways in, in our lives. So I'm going to, I've got a pump on here, so I'm going to pump about two dessert spoons. Hopefully it's not going to go everywhere. <laughs> one and I could have used the other coconut oil I could have used a solid coconut oil and melted it down again but that will harden and I don't really want these bath salts to harden I just want this to be distributed through so that's the reason of choice of using this it's to dilute the essential oil I said earlier if you put it straight on your salts when the salts dissolve in the water the oil will be left floating on top as it were so I want to dissolve my essential oil I want to dilute it in the fractionated coconut oil and then I can mix it with the salts and then when I put the salts in my bath and the bath salts dissolve the coconut oil and the essential oils together will be in my bath water whether it's for a foot bath or a full bath, I want to be able to know that I'm using the essential oils safely and effectively, getting the most therapeutic benefit that I can. So I'm going to just pour this over now, now that I've mixed the oils in my coconut oil and diluted my essential oils in my coconut oil, I'm just going to pour it over the salts, make sure I get all of it out, <laughs> and then mix it around. 
so that the smell and the essential oils get mixed in all the salts without making the salts very very oily I don't need them to be very oily because I have the foot scrub for that Seems to be mixed quite thoroughly now. <laughs> I could, of course, do this all day. I find it very relaxing. I'd love to know if you find it relaxing. Perhaps you can let me know in the comments which was the most relaxing part of the video. And if you'd like more videos like this, please do let me know. Of course, you can let me know by liking and subscribing and all that. <laughs> but I'd love to hear from you in the comments and hear what you think. It is my pleasure to make these videos. And if only one person benefits, then I'm more than happy. Because I feel like I'm also benefiting. having fun, I'm getting nice and relaxed myself. <laughs> okay, that looks like a great consistency. I'm really pleased with the colour and the ratio of all the ingredients in there. So now I once again have to spoon it in. Let's see how it goes a little bit easier because it sticks a little bit more together than the sugar on its own did. Look how nice that's looking in the jar. Oops. I hope I haven't been banging too many uh, metal and glass spoons and bowls. I'm trying to uh, avoid them. <laughs> wow, I just love the amount of, just love the colour and the amount of lavender petals in there. Smells so good too. Clary sage and the eucalyptus together are so grounding. And then the floral lavender and of course Clary sage is floral too. So relaxing. So it looks like looks like I can maybe pour the rest in like this. <laughs> If you see I've made a little bit too much there, perhaps filled it a little bit too full when I was making it and that's okay though because you know what I'm going to do with that, don't you? I'm going to go and give myself a nice foot soak so I can use, actually if I pour the water in here I'll get all the 
salts from around the edge as well so I won't be wasting anything. So that will be a perfect way to use those. So here's the lid, I'll just put the lid on and you can see a beautiful jar of foot bath salts or bath salts, whatever you'd like to call it. So I'm going to make a label again. bath or it could be any kind of bath salts and these are also April 21 so maybe there's just room I can't draw a lavender flower very well but I can draw a little heart here just to remind me that it's all about self-care <laughs> self-love Put it on the front this time. I can put it here. And this time, this lavender coloured string. beautiful day earlier. It is that time of year where April showers bring May flowers of course. So now I've told you a few times that it's April. So now I have to get around to editing this and posting this <laughs> while it's still April. I actually have Another video that I'm really looking forward to finish preparing, but it's quite a lot of work and I really want to find the time to do that, so watch this space. So, my, <laughs> my uh, bow is going a bit bananas again, but you can see how it just gives a lovely finish to it when you put a little bow around the top like that. And um, I don't know if I want to do a bigger bow or what, but I could cut, I could uh, perhaps cut the end off that little long there, or maybe put it around one more time. Let's see. But basically, that's my lavender foot bath salts, my peppermint foot scrub. So it doesn't matter. Which one you use first, you can use the scrub before you put your feet in the water with the salts or you can soak in the salts and then use the scrub and then go back in the salts to rinse the scrub off. It's always a good idea to moisturise afterwards of course but on the other hand there is a lot of lovely moisturising coconut oil in the scrub in particular so you can just even use that in the shower. If I've been soaking in a foot bath, I think I would apply a moisturiser after as well. Or perhaps some coconut oil with some essential oil in. That could be nice. Some more peppermint oil perhaps. There are many, many options and many ways that you could do this. So if I've inspired you to make your own version, I'd love to hear about it. 
I'd love to hear from you in the comments as I mentioned before but for now I wish you a good night a good day whatever you're up to I hope you're well and I hope to see you again soon bye for now <laughs>